Over 10 years ago, Clash of Clans was released, and within 3 months it was the highest grossing game in the US. And in 2013, it was the most profitable game in the world. With all this enormous success, there was bound to be many imitators that would try to copy the Clash of Clans formula. But what if I told you that Clash of Clans was not the original, and that they stole everything from another game? From the P.E.K.K.A. to the Town Hall, and even copied the tutorial word for word, scene for scene. Here is the real history of Clash of Clans. Kicksai, a game studio founded by David Scott, Paul Priest, and Will Harbin, is responsible for some of the most popular Flash games of all time. In 2007, David Scott created Element TD, the first ever standalone tower defense game on Flash. Soon after, Paul Priest created a desktop tower defense, a tower defense game where the player would create their own maze, unlike the usual preset paths that enemies would follow in most tower defense games. This game was a huge success and had over 100 million plays. Paul's second variation of this game was made for Facebook called Desktop Defender. Bringing the game to Facebook allowed the game to be played online with friends. This taught him and David a lot about creating online games. After this was released, they wanted to make another game expanding on this idea. David Scott, a co-founder of Kixi, came up with the idea to make a tower defense game where you would build your maze over a long period of time. This version would be more like building a base in an RTS, like Command and Conquer, rather than the typical tower defense game. You would then construct and send troops to attack other people's mazes. The idea evolved into a game where you would build a city, train monsters, and then send them to go loot other people's cities. Doing this combined the MMO and RTS genres for the first time. This game was called Backyard Monsters. A week before Backyard Monsters was released, the game was top-down 2D, and over a weekend David Scott rewrote the engine and redrew all of the buildings and monsters artwork to make the game isometric 2D, a style that almost all MMO RTS games use today, including Clash of Clans. Backyard Monsters started development in the second half of 2009, and was released on March 12, 2010. Now that we know that Backyard Monsters was the first MMO RTS, let us see what Clash of Clans stole from Backyard Monsters. Starting with the tutorial of both games, you can start to see the similarities. In both games, you start off by building a cannon to protect your base. Soon after this, the enemy sends over monsters or goblins to attack your base. After a successful defense, you will receive pokey, or in Clash of Clans, you receive wizards to seek revenge on the enemy. After successfully defeating the enemy base, you build a hatchery and resource collectors. Just like in Clash of Clans where it has you build a barracks, an elixir pump, and gold mine. At the end of both tutorials, the game has you upgrade your town hall to level 2. Yes, you heard that right. The tutorial of Clash of Clans was stolen from another game that came out 2 years earlier. In this section, we will examine the origin of key elements in backyard monsters including the town hall, resource collectors, and defenses. Like we said before, David was influenced by real-time strategy games such as Command & Conquer. In an RTS game, the town hall is the most important building as it serves as the hub for building and upgrading structures and troops. To upgrade buildings and troops, you need resources. In some RTS games, you can gather resources by sending out workers or by having resource collectors that generate resources passively over time. David Scott, the creator of Backyard Monsters, combined these elements from popular RTS games with an MMO game to create a new type of game. While Backyard Monsters expanded on the RTS genre by giving players their own map slash base to build and upgrade over time, Clash of Clans did not innovate much and simply copied this mechanic. This made the game more about attacking and building bases while eliminating the need for players to start from scratch and manage resources each game. Backyard Monsters was an always online game with countless of bases to raid. This meant that David Scott needed a way to regulate player progress. He introduced several key innovations including limiting the number of builders per player to 5. Implementing long upgrade times that could last for over a week and capping the amount of housing spaces for each player's army. These innovations set Backyard Monsters apart from other RTS games. Unfortunately, Clash of Clans simply copied these ideas without acknowledging their origins. As a result, many people wrongly believe that Clash of Clans was the original game. With these long upgrade times, of course people wanted to speed them up. And that is where Backyard Monsters brought in their in-game currency called Shiny. 
In Backyard Monsters, Shiny is a premium currency that players can earn by completing quests, removing obstacles from their yard, or by purchasing it with real money. Shiny can be used to speed up building and training times, trade for resources, or hire additional workers. The second builder will cost you 250 Shiny, the third one is 500, fourth is 1000, and the fifth one is 2000 Shiny. These are the exact same prices that builders cost in Clash of Clans. We will now go over some of the more miscellaneous things that Clash of Clans took from Backyard Monsters. There are too many to go into great detail, so we will just name some that are self-explanatory. Backyard Monsters came up with an easier way to build your base using a top-down base editing feature called the Yard Planner. Clash of Clans had their own version of this called the Layout Editor. Surprisingly enough, Backyard Monsters had a second base the player could use in the game called the Inferno Yard. This came out on January 13th, 2012. This base had alternate versions of the monsters from your normal yard, with some having new abilities and playstyles. Clash of Clans added something similar to their game called the Builder Hall. This came out in 2017. Backyard Monsters had a feature called Alliances, where players could join groups with their friends. The Alliances could give you a few different types of bonuses, but there were no wars like Clash of Clans. Interestingly, both of the game's clan badges are similar in design, although neither is unique. The Monster Bunker is a defensive tower that releases monsters from it when any of the attacker's troops enters its range. This building works exactly the same on defense as the clan castle. Now that we know where the core game mechanics for backyard monsters came from, let us learn more about their troops. We will start with troops from backyard monsters and let us see if you can name the troop that Clash of Clans turned them into. Starting with the Pokey, it's a low health and damage melee troop that targets anything. They're not very good by themselves, but in a group they can do some real damage. They also take up very minimal housing space and are easily killed off by splash damage. What Clash of Clans troop does this remind you of? Oh yes, of course, it is the Barbarian. The infamous Dave is the strongest base troop in Backyard Monsters. Comparing him to the original P.E.K.K.A. from Clash of Clans, you can see where they got the idea from. They both have acronyms as names, both are the last troop to unlock in the game, both take up a lot of resources and time to be created, both are slow but very powerful, and lastly they are both mysterious robotic figures. The Octa Ooze is a slow moving, high health, and low damage melee troop that only targets defense towers. They are a good distraction for smaller troops. You can see the similarities between the Octa Ooze and the Giant. The Bolt is a very fast moving looter with low health and high damage. They only target buildings with resources in them until all of those are destroyed. Not really much to say here besides that they are very similar to the goblins from Clash of Clans. The Ira is a monster that's favorite target is walls. They will blow themselves up, damaging or destroying walls. They are a great opening troop as it helps your monsters infiltrate the base faster. And yes, you guessed it right. This is what Clash of Clans copied to make the wall breakers. Now let us get into why you have never heard of Backyard Monsters. Backyard Monsters was a Flash game only playable on Congregate and Facebook. Within the first three months they had grown over 500,000 monthly active users, and by July 2010 that number had grown to 4.5 million. This game was something that no one had ever seen before, and this contributed to its early success. One of the unforeseen downsides of Backyard Monsters would be that it was a game made on Flash, and could only be played on the computer. Comparing that to Clash of Clans that can only be played on the phone, you can start to see the problem with the game. A base building game where you are encouraged to check on your base every day is a lot easier with a phone than on a computer. Many people do not know this, but Clash of Clans was originally being developed for the computer and not mobile. Now, it is easy to say that Backyard Monsters should have been made for the phone, but this was 2010 and the gaming market was just getting started. Also, the developers of Backyard Monsters were veteran Flash developers. They could not have foreseen the success this game was going to achieve. Now, even with this inherent downside, why did Clash of Clans become so much more successful than Backyard Monsters if they just copied their game? In the words of David Scott, they did teach us a valuable lesson on the importance of a game's theme on its overall reach and success. You see, Supercell saw the success that Backyard Monsters was having on Facebook and saw an opportunity to put the game on the rapidly growing mobile gaming market. They made a very friendly and clean art style that people of all ages would like to look at. They designed their troops where anyone can understand what they do without having to play the game. Whereas in Backyard Monsters, you would have no idea what these troops do by just looking at them. Clash of Clans took Backyard Monsters and coated it with a fresh coat of paint, cleaned up a couple of problems, added better social features, and brought the game to a much larger audience. This is why they succeeded, but we must give credit to the real innovators who created the genre and are the only reason that Clash of Clans could be around today. 
Another thing that David Scott told me about his feelings on Clash is, I will say that is a good thing for all, that game design cannot be copyrighted. If it were, then we would all be playing Wolfenstein 3D. I just wish people innovated more though. Wise words from a true innovator of the industry. This video was created to shed light on the true history of Clash of Clans, as the game's developers have shown little interest in acknowledging it. Despite watching several videos about the game's history, I could not find any that mentioned backyard monsters as Clash of Clans source material. It is now clear that Clash of Clans is the real clone, which makes the thousands of videos calling other games Clash of Clans clones ironic and hypocritical. I would like to give a big thanks to David Scott for providing valuable insight into the creation of backyard monsters and helping with the making of this video. His input cleared up some questions and taught us more about the game's development. Despite attempts to reach out to developers who worked on the original Clash of Clans team, none responded, but I remain interested in learning about their development process and why they chose to move the game's development to mobile.